Today, we're going to take a look at a graph from Viridian Capital Advisors and do an analysis to kind of give us an idea on North American markets, or in other words, what the global cannabis market is doing relative to value. So this is going to be an interesting kind of chart, at least for, you know, if you want to nerd out like me and kind of look at the top five market caps in the U.S. over Canada and kind of see which one is more valuable. That's what we're going to do coming up. It's only entertainment. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. So we're going to take a look at the top five market caps in the U.S. That is being uh, Cureleaf, Cresco, GTI, Terrasen, and Verano Holdings uh, versus their Canadian counterparts. That is Aurora, Canopy, Chrono, Sundial, and Tilray. Each of their stock prices were equaled, 100% equal, on February 19th earlier this year, uh, right at the top of the market. So since February 19th, the prices of the top five uh, or top U.S. Uh, cannabis stocks, they've all fallen almost 19%. Canadian counterparts, however, they've fallen over 38%. Uh, so they've fallen 20% more in Canada than they have in the U.S. Why? Well, a couple of things that uh, we think reflect on some uh, of that stability in the U.S., um, as well as some of the uh, correction that occurred. Uh, starting with the latter, we believe that the market correction was reflected um, basically as a uh, overspeculation on federal legalization between October and January of this year. The market uh, for cannabis stocks skyrocketed on federal cannabis legalization speculation, plain and simple. And so there was an over uh, abundance of, of capital that came in driving those prices up and a lot of profit taking came off. And then we saw Fibonacci retracements up to 68% uh, or more on uh, some of those individual equities. So crushing uh, a lot of bag holders, uh, but then providing some opportunities for people who didn't buy in at the, at the all-time highs. A couple of highlights for the United States market. Looking at the U.S. opportunities, uh, you can see that any uh, U.S. company that employs a lot of people and or has property, plant, and equipment, mostly real estate, uh, those two things have not been able to be written off on their taxes because of a little uh, thing called 280E. It's a tax provision that doesn't allow um, federally illegal substances to write off their taxes, including uh, employee taxes, which is huge. So uh, what we might see from having the benefit of uh, banking legislation. So even without federal legalization in the U.S., we can see a massive upswing in profit, uh, yeah, profit potential price appreciation um, and stock prices, all from allowing banking into the U.S. and or elimination of 280E. Uh, unfortunately, Harborside out of California, um, they, they sued the IRS that didn't work, but there's other ways of going about that, like getting, um, you know, this, the Safe Banking Act um, or other legislation through to allow for U.S. banking and or eliminating 280E. So any cannabis company that, again, employs a lot of individuals or has real estate is a potential opportunity, um, not in and of itself, you know, do your due diligence because this isn't financial advice. Remember, it's, it's only, only entertainment. entertainment. Looking at multi-state operators as another opportunity because they have a lot of real estate, because they have a lot of people, there's also consolidation Um in the U.S., so that's going to make it even more difficult for Canadian competitors to come in, uh, even once they're uh, legally allowed to. That first mover advantage uh, is an opportunity. Post-pandemic, we're seeing um, even before the whole pandemic, a lot of investors focusing on price uh, profitability, rather, and you know that's even more important now is to have strong balance sheets. 
There's recent earnings releases out of Canada about structural integrity and, and lack of profitability. And so those issues aren't really going away. They Canada's had more opportunities with the 2.0 rollout. That is the concentrates and edibles, beverages, everything that was, that's been allowed to be sold now um, for a while. And yet it hasn't really improved overall profitability, maybe because the concentrates that I'm hearing are expensive and the quality is low. So the other thing I'm seeing too is brand concentration. Uh, up in Canada, there's uh, as much as you know, one brand owning 45% of a particular region, which uh, is not really as competitive as it could be or should be. Um, and so maybe there's distribution issues uh, where they're Maybe there's stores that, that have exclusivity. Um, there's definitely been slow rollouts. You see that in British Columbia and, and all across um, the board there. So Canada definitely needs to be opened up um, and move forward a lot quicker. If they want that first mover advantages and be able to compete, they're gonna have to do that a lot quicker. So basically what we're seeing is from those five Canadian companies from uh, a market cap perspective, they're trading at 13.6 x versus their uh, u.s counterparts at 6x so you know investors are going to obviously look at that they're going to rebalance their portfolios typically between uh, september and uh, december 31st rebalancing portfolios and giving greater weight to better value with more profitable and faster growing companies that are obviously u.s so um you know Another example is is Tesla. Like them or not, uh, their price to earnings are trading at thirteen hundred fifty percent. You know, at the peak. So if you're going to buy uh, a share of Tesla with the price of that stock being thirteen hundred fifty percent more than their earnings, then that means you think that eventually that's going to pay off. So they mean that means that they have to make sales not based on carbon credits or Bitcoin, but actual cars. Uh, and so, you know, that's a lot, that's a lot to expect. Um, most investors, I would say, um, institutional investors are not doing that. Retail investors are speculating like crazy. Absolutely. Um, but retail, um, investors might jump into some of these penny stocks as well as, but the sophisticated investors or uh, brick and mortars institutional investors are not going to pay more than double for a Canadian counterpart than they are for the U S that's just plain and simple, but um, they're putting in tens of millions, if not billions uh, and not just gambling, um, you know, a few hundred bucks. So that's the ultimate difference here. U um, S counter U uh, S companies are definitely, um, more advantageous, there's more opportunities. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more uh, consolidation uh, M&As in the US market because of that. But you're gonna have to come back to the Talking Hedge and find out. So with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe or don't and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.